Howdy fellow campers, van lifers, and overland travelers. As I discussed in my last two videos, I wanted to improve upon the four-wheel drive capability and weight carrying capacity, as well as some additional space of my four-wheel drive Sprinter van for more extended long distance and global travel. So I have embarked on a mission over the last two years to look for a new overlanding truck chassis and camper. In this video, I'm going to summarize the truck options I have explored and discuss what I have liked and also what I didn't like and share my valuation and comparison of about over 200 specifications of the trucks that I down considered from and some of the others that didn't make the final cut and why they didn't and yet also could be great options for you. I've had so many great adventures in my van. Thanks for joining me on those and I'm going to keep sharing with you more adventures on this camper build out. So getting into it, you know that I've had several vans, did not want a pop top. I've had that and I knew I wanted a hard wall camper. I also knew I didn't want to go back to a motorcycle for travels as I started out with many years ago. And also what really led me into my first vans and that was really a sport utility vehicle. And of course, what led me into four wheel drive being the Toyotas and Jeeps and Land Rovers that I've had over the years, which I have absolutely loved. And they've been so much fun for so many travels. And really the Camel Trophy is what got me into a lot of the overland global travel that I've been doing over the years. But anyways, those are great vehicles, um, lots of fun, but I knew I didn't want those either. And I certainly didn't want a trailer while they had so many great features. I also knew I wanted something that was not only compact and complete, but not necessarily that old. And I really wanted electric drivetrain, but realized that just wasn't going to be practical or ability for me to build something like that right now at this point in time. So I headed to Overland Expo for ideas and I saw many amazing vehicles and really big vehicles that blew my mind with these amazing expedition campers. And then of course, all kinds of different versions of that. And I really got enamored with them and the ability that they could provide for this really long-term extended travels. And so I really, I kept looking and I looked at them and I was really blown away also not just by what they could provide but also with their compact size and particularly because of their cab over design in which the cab folds forward and so sitting on top of the engine afforded them a much shorter wheelbase and total length making them much more compact for what they could provide and I was really blown away with what Matt at Angry Owl Mountain Works uh, had built for Eric uh, with Never Quit Overland on this Isuzu NPR and the amazing full drive system and I was also really enamored with these full-size pickup trucks with their 41 inch tall tires and their great campers that they had on them. So I dove into a detailed analysis I'm going to share with you now about how I analyze the different vehicles that were available for an expedition camper. Okay, so here is my spreadsheet on how I went ahead and did my analysis between the different chassis options that I was considering. At first, I really started with the uh, two pickup trucks, the Ford 550 and the Ram 5500 cab cutaways, meaning there is no actual pickup bed, just simply the cab truck as well. And I analyzed those and really the wheelbases that I would need, which these trucks actually do it really in a cab to axle length. And then also I looked at diesel and gas and a couple different length options. And I went and pulled the specs and I created a rating chart and I went ahead and did weight this as well for per item here. And I also compared this against my Sprinter as well as some other vehicles that I was considering or had considered and I'd add on vehicles as I continue through this analysis. And I would collect all kinds of information about them that they had as available options or standard options. And then I would, from those, create essentially a, a scoring chart for different things such as factory specs and dimensions and then the totals for those. And I would really take a look at how they came out with those. And then I would break down all the different information I could find on them, these specifications of their weights and weight capacities. And of course, sometimes they weren't always known. So if they weren't known, I would leave those elements blank, but I would fill in where I did know them. And then of course, lengths as well. So everywhere from payload and ability, uh, weight carrying capacity of tires and things like that, and of the frame itself or of the axles to the lengths, wheelbase lengths, total lengths, and, and things like that, the cab length, 
Uh, and then also heights as well. And of course, not just the total height to the cab roof, but really the height from the frame, from the ground to the top of the frame, and also the expected subframe height because that would ultimately lead to the total camper height. And so I'd create not only all these heights, and some of these would be calculated based on information I did have, and down to the tenth of an inch, as you can see here, and also a weighting or scoring chart for each one of these different dimensions. I would do the same for widths and all the different widths that were known, and sometimes they were approximate, but generally they were pretty well known and sometimes very specific, depending on what the manufacturer provided for these different dimensions. And again, I was always also referencing back to my sprinter as really a good point of reference to what I knew I had now, what I liked about it, and what I would accept as being either greater or less than what those dimensions were. And then also looked at off-road capabilities. And some of these were really calculated or qualitative based on the different tire sizes as the 41-inch tires that these trucks would be modified to and what that would really then correlate to as far as these numbers. And same for these other vehicles as well. And again, a scoring chart. So that is how I did it. My basic vehicle requirements were that it had to be able to support at least a 6,000 pound payload capacity, have a more robust four wheel drive capability than the Sprinter van, be able to sport a composite rectangular camper at least about 15 feet long and six and a half feet wide or larger to be able to support the greater gear, water and electrical systems inside, and also be capable of long distance and international expedition travel. Ideally, it not be any longer or wider with the camper than my Sprinter van, which is roughly 80 inches by 24 feet, and a total height less than 12 feet so it can fit inside my garage. Now, this certainly ruled out earth roamers because of their long length, and also some of the nice-to-haves would be increased power, torque, and a reliable drivetrain, along with some other nice-to-haves, such as central tire inflation, a shorter wheelbase, and tighter turning radius. This immediately led me to the Ford 550 and the Ram 5500 cab chassis, meaning no rear pickup truck. Both these are really nice. The Ram had a much nicer interior, yet both of these did not have really the higher level trim packages uh, with the cab chassis. However, they had some good features, but they also came with really big, heavy tires, and that was a bit of a discourager. One of the first camper manufacturers that I met with was Overland Explorer X Vehicles up in northern Canada who makes a beautiful custom camper and I really do admire their aluminum sheet cabinetry and camper construction, their systems basement. But I ultimately decided not to go with a pickup truck cab chassis. And the reason why is because of the long wheelbase, overall total long length, and also really pretty poor turning radius compared to other options out there. So I next went ahead and headed to Missouri and met with Global Expedition Vehicles, Renee and Mike, who are really great and they're, I love their build quality of their products. Uh, fantastic. We had several conversations and iterated on the designs. One of the truck chassis I really liked is the Kenworth K-Series, which uh, Mike and Renee have a four-wheel drive conversion done out of house. It's fantastic. And they also showed me their lifting roof on a Unimog, as, which I believe the Action Mobile originally came up with. And I was really enamored by the idea of the lifting roof, which I also saw another example of that here at one of the van expos in Deal in Colorado, which I really like this a lot. And I love the idea of a lifting roof for bringing down the camper total height. But also it adds a lot of complication to the interior and obviously you can't really have any full height walls like a bathroom and things like that inside which does complicate the overall camper building construction. So I also looked at an Elm TV by Acela and talked with them and got some pricing and also test drove one that Hunter RMV had in house which is really pretty great but it was a little bit big and the air brakes were a little bit touchy for my preference. This here is one of the greatest charts. I just love it. It was, I, I, I don't know who it was created by. It was on one of the forums, but it really shows the relative size and scale and also the camper size and scale of these different vehicles. It was a real keen reminder of the big hood that a pickup truck has and just how much space that takes up. A good example is 
on a pickup truck, it's typically 13 feet from the front bumper to the back of the front doors, whereas a van's about nine feet. On a cab over, it's only about five or six feet. So I really kept leading me back to a cab over, such as the Isuzu NPR, Mitsubishi Fuso, and some different design options there, and talking with people about it. I did also talk with Eric of Never Quit Overland about buying his uh, camp cab over they had built with the camper but it just wasn't the right fit for me I did not need a crew cab as well instead of the extra space for more people I really needed extra space for the gear that I like to carry the outdoor gear particularly bikes mountain bikes and so forth so I looked at the different specifications of the Mitsubishi Fuso and the Zuzu NPR and I was really enamored with them 133 inch wheelbase it can get you as much as a 15 or 16 foot camper. So I looked at some different options and some custom four wheel drive conversions out there on them. And all of them were really great, including uh, here shown is uh, George's over uh, at Overland Adventure Vehicles. Very lovely design. Nonetheless, I started looking around at more designs and options that were out there. And as I ruled out different options or couldn't get certain options for different reasons, I nonetheless got dimensions and information that enabled me to either rule something out or be able to evaluate it as an option for me. And one of the options I kept coming back to as well was also a Ford E450 cutaway van, which essentially is a van that's just cut away at the end. You could put a box on it. And with a 158 inch wheelbase, it was still fairly compact, more compact than a Sprinter van, came with really good options, was a good price, and could be have a good four wheel drive conversion put on it with essentially a Ford F250 drivetrain. So pretty robust. So I worked in several offices for that, as well as a total composites design for a transit van and ruled that out because of the four wheel drive system for that. But nonetheless, took a look also at a E450 camper and thought about buying it, but it just didn't quite really work for my uh, my needs and use as a camper. It was just too much work to modify it. So went ahead and took a look also at a CV and then ultimately came to probably one of the most ultimate exhibition campers, the Unimog. And one would think that because I didn't choose the GMC CV because it's a little bit too long of a wheelbase, has a big long hood that I didn't really like, the Unimog may be also too big, and it is a bit large, but I really like the design. It's surprisingly nimble and not that large for the size of wheelbase uh, in the, to the camper that can be fit on it. And I worked with a few different people, including Uniden Engineering out of Australia to have one imported and also met with Jay Couch of Couch Engineering out in Colorado and took a look at some options out there. Um, ultimately did not d go with the Unimog and still very much like the Unimog, especially the type of campers that can fit on them, uh, the weight carrying capacity of them, the payload's fantastic. And of course, they also have central tire inflation, as you can see Jay here talking about, which is an amazing feature, along with the portal axles uh, from an off-road capability perspective. Now, as luck would have it, I actually had an opportunity to buy a 2006 Unimog U500, one of the roughly 190 that were ever imported into the United States. And looking at the specifications, it was really a great setup. Uh, it had a total gross vehicle weight rating of 33,000 pounds. Uh, it was a fairly short wheelbase of about 150 inches uh, and set up nice and high. And uh, had a lot of great features on it, but ultimately I chose not to buy it in part because it was fairly worn. Uh, it had a lot of rust on it, uh, which wasn't as big of a deal, but also a lot of fairly worn parts and some leaks, uh, mechanical drivetrain leaks. And I wasn't really sure exactly how to get those things all repaired and fixed easily. There weren't many people in the United States or even in Canada that could repair and work on those. Um, it did fit the bill of me and fairly compact. I had some fun driving around. You can watch my video on that. Uh, but uh, also has a lot of things I did not need. Uh, the hydraulic system all the way around, the PTOs or power takeoffs, um, for example, uh, and some of the work that need to be done in some of those things to bring them back really to uh, being in good shape. And so it wasn't quite uh, really the best fit. Also has a fairly tall frame height of almost 60 inches, which means the camper height ends up being quite a bit tall and really does ne necessitate a lifting roof on the camper. Another thing I had a little bit of a challenge with trying to figure out was really that central control panel on the U series of Unimogs. And you know that, how do you really do a pass through, for example, with that there in place? So uh, also the air conditioning was 
not adequate, but especially for where I test drove it. But nonetheless, I decided to move on from it and came across some other interesting vehicles that I really liked, uh, such as this beautiful old Mercedes fire truck by Wheels24 or Terra EXP, and also a similar one by Global Expedition Vehicles from a long ago. These are both used and available, but uh, I chose not to buy them in part because of they drove just a little bit too large. Uh, they didn't have necessary gearing to go at the highway speeds I would like. And being a little bit older, sometimes they need a little bit of work and stuff like that too. I also came across this beautiful old Mitsubishi uh, FTR, I believe it's called, which is larger than the Fuso. And uh, it was also a really lovely vehicle and a used beautiful camper and really well done. Again, it just wasn't quite the right fit for me um, and partly also because of the lack of space for supporting bikes, which is really common in a lot of these expedition vehicles. They just don't really have adequate gear storage for uh, things like inflatable kayaks and paddle boards and bikes. It's essential to me, but I really like the electronic shifting on this Mitsubishi four-wheel drive here. So that ultimately led me to Earth Cruiser, which I had been looking at really their four-wheel drive conversion on the Mitsubishi Fuso for some time and actually reached out to them back in 2019 to ask if they would sell me just the chassis without their camper. And then later on, they did eventually come around to making that as part of their business in a separate business business unit, so to speak, for the core chassis, as they call it. So I spent some time on several trips up in Bend, Oregon with the Earth Cruiser team. And that allowed me to take some dimensions of the Mitsubishi Fusos that they had converted into four-wheel drive and really understand if this would work for me as a platform for my camper and take a look at their camper and understand a little more about how the, the space and dimensions work. It, and I liked it. It was a good fit as far as dimensions go. It was the same width as my Sprinter van. It was actually slightly shorter than my Sprinter van and yet could accommodate an even slightly larger length of camper and had a good four-wheel drive system and things like that. So it met really all the, the bills about what I was looking for for this new vehicle. And comparing it back to a pickup truck as seen here, you can see this pickup truck is quite a bit longer than the Mitsubishi Fuso and yet has a smaller camper. So I gave Earth Cruiser a whole lot of money and after many months they went ahead and built out a Mitsubishi Fuso with their four wheel drive conversion, uh, essentially Dana 80 axles on it and 37 inch tires which can accommodate almost 9,000 pounds of payload per axle. So met all my requirements with a good four wheel drive system, good payload capacity, very short wheelbase of just over 130 inches and a nice turning radius as well. So I am so glad to have this part of the project now behind me and have the chassis selected that's going to work for my camper. I now am in the process of building out my new camper and I'm going to share with you videos um, over a whole series of the build out of my Total Composites camper with European camper windows, many chassis improvements and modifications, custom storage boxes and a full featured full time livable expedition camper build out with revolutionary solutions to space, comfort, heating, ventilation, and cooling, and gear storage. So please do subscribe and share with others, and stay tuned for all the different camper build-out videos to come. Mm -hmm.